Exodus 23 and Hebrews 13. Exodus 23, verse 20 and 21, and Hebrews 13, 1 and 2. The last two times I have preached here, I have felt this um, something here, and uh, a couple weeks ago when I was here, I felt it so strongly on the platform in the altar call that I knew the next time I was here what my assignment would be, and that is this tonight. Uh, normally would not start a revival with this message, but I know what the Lord has told me to do, and I pray I follow him. I thank you for being so anointed. Uh, most churches, you try to bring the anointing to them. This church is very anointed, and that's years and years of praying. I honor all the elders that are here tonight. I can feel your anointing up here on this platform. Thank you for all the years of sacrificial prayer that you have given to the kingdom of God. Preachers that are sensitive to the voice of God can feel that prayer. And the Lord's going to do something great tonight. Exodus 23, verse 20 says, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Exodus or Hebrews chapter 13 verses 1 and 2 let brotherly love continue be not forgetful to entertain strangers for thereby some have entertained angels unawares I feel to tell you tonight and I'm going to title it this the angels are near the angels are near would you just get with me right now and get your mind in the spirit and begin to open up your heart to what the Lord wants to reveal to you and impart to you because we are going deep tonight in the Holy Ghost. Lord Jesus, take over this atmosphere right now. Bind any demonic power that would hinder anything from happening. Any human spirit against the will of God, we pray, would be submitted right now to the will of God. Have your way. Let the word do its work and release your glory and your authority. I thank you and I praise you only for what you're about to do in this place tonight in the name of Jesus. Would you clap your hands to the Lord one more time? You may be seated. I was in a conference a few years ago, and Sister Bobby Wendell, who was a great missionary overseas into Africa years ago, was exhorting, and I was supposed to speak after her. And when she was exhorting, she made a statement that stuck with me and is still with me. She said this statement. She said, did you know you can prepare your house for angelic visitations. She said, we did this all the time in Ethiopia when we had needs and in Africa, and then and when we would pray, angels would come. And then she kind of just changed the subject and started talking about something else, and I forget everything she said. My mind was stuck on that statement that she made. You could prepare your home for angels. There are many types of angels that you'll read about in your Bible. There's, 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 they have different jobs, different obligations. Let me just break it down, and you can just go with me here. The first type of angel that we all know about is the messenger angel. That's, that's the bright light. That's the wings. That's Gabriel showing up out of nowhere and scaring someone half to death. And that's what a messenger angel would be, someone where you immediately, you, you would not have to be a prophet to know that's an angel. You're in a room, and all of a sudden it lights up and this massive figure is in the room, that's an angel of the Lord. And so these are messenger angels that would always come with specific words from God in the Bible to people and situations that they were going through. And then there are warring angels. Not usually seen by humans, but warring angels or angels in the heavenlies. Anytime you see the word host in your Bible, heavenly host, that word host means military or army. And so, for instance, when Jesus was born on the earth, the Bible said there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. That, we picture these floating angels in the sky 
fly. These were not these little fairied wings. These were warring angels of God that were sent into the atmosphere. Herod could not touch Jesus because the warring angels were on sight. When Elisha was surrounded by the enemy and the servant said, we need help, we, we are surrounded. Elisha said, Lord, open his eyes that he might see. And he saw on the mountain char chariots and horses made out of fire. These were the warring angels of God that have come to help Elisha. When Joshua at the battle of Jericho, before they marched and shouted, before that all went down, the Bible said he met the captain of the host. The, oh, this is good. The reason why the walls fell was because there were two armies shouting that day. There was a huge shut up. There was a human army on the ground, and there was a heavenly army above them saying, "Bring down the wall." You have angels that are fighting for your family right now, fighting for your lost children right now, fighting for your future right now. I remember, I remember a few years ago, and if, I, if I've told this here, I apologize, but I remember in a service a few years ago in uh, Stockton, California, in the middle of a great revival during the song service, we were praying for Israel, and I was interceding for Israel, and I saw that angel of the Lord blocking those rockets and sending them back. I saw people launching rockets on the border of Israel into Israel, and something in the air just out of fire, just swatting them back in the, into the Palestine, this being out of fire. I thought I was crazy, but I was speaking in tongues, feeling God. I told the people, I believe I saw an angel blocking rockets that were trying to be launched into Israel. They stared at me like I was crazy. But the next morning on the news, the newscaster said, last night, men in Palestine went to the border of Israel with rockets and launched them. But in midair, the rockets reversed and went back into Palestine. And a few years later, a few years later, I was on the phone with Brother Stone King one day, and he was talking to me about, about Brother Barnes, T.W. Barnes, who had prayed for Israel all the time. And he said, did you know that one time Brother Barnes went to Israel, and he was met by Michael, the, the warring angel? He said, I said, no. He said, yeah, Michael guards the borders of Israel. My ears perked up. I said, what do you mean? He said, yeah, he guards the borders of Israel. He met Brother Barnes in his hotel room and said, welcome to Israel. We've been waiting for you. Then went back up into the sky. And I said, wow, I've never heard that story. He said, yes, indeed. He said, you wouldn't believe it. Michael's made out of fire. I said, I think I would believe it. He's a warring angel of the Lord. Whether you see him or not, they're fighting for you right now. They're fighting for what you're hoping God's going to do for you. There are cherubims which are worshiping angels the angels around the throne that are saying holy 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 is the lord that's why in a church service sometimes you'll feel something or you'll you'll pick up on something moving you can't figure out what that is those are worshiping angels that when you worship god angels love two things they love holiness and they love worship and when you combine worship with holiness angels get in the atmosphere and they love to get near that oh i wish i could preach on that a second We've got a lot of churches that know how to worship but aren't holy and a lot of churches that are holy but are dead. But when you combine holiness with worship, angels in the atmosphere, they want to be near that. Before he was ever a creator, a deliverer, a savior, a healer, he was holy, the Bible said. You serve a holy God, and the angels of the Lord love to be around holy people, worshiping a holy God. 
I remember in a sir, I can, I've got the picture on my phone. This has happened multiple times in services where people would pick up on something and tell me something was in the room, and then the video camera would come. One service in Florida, we were in the middle of a service just like this, and in the altar call, they were worshiping. In fact, the church reminds me of this church, very powerful, explosive, holy, worshiping God. And in a service just like this, we were praising God, and people were being healed in the altar call. The next morning, uh, the pastor called me and said, you've got to watch last night's service at such and such time in the altar call. We're getting calls from all over the world. People were watching it last night. And when you said there's angels in here, the camera is watching as a live video as they're moving and floating across in front of the camera. I didn't see it with my eyes, but the Lord spoke it in the atmosphere because they were there because the people were worshiping with holiness, saying you're worthy of anything we can give you and more. And angels said we will move in that atmosphere. And it's, you know why? You know why people get healed in song service, get the Holy Ghost in song service in places like this? There are angels unlocking those chains during the atmosphere because the atmosphere is so pure and so holy and so righteous and so full of worship that they can move and touch. And then there are ministering angels which you would think would be as a human. Someone you would talk to and is not a human. And we'll get on this in a minute. And there are guardian angels. Angels that come to protect you. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth him. And so many times... Uh, people, this has happened to me so many times. It started in the book of Acts chapter 12 when Peter was released from prison by the angel and Peter goes and knocks on the door of the prayer meeting and they're praying for Peter to be released and when he knocks on the door and says, it's me, Peter, they said, it's his angel because the Jews believed your angel looked like you and they thought for sure Peter was dead and his angel was loose. I think they read, they think it's crazy. But then one day I was in, in, a, in, a, uh, in Florida and I got a call from a pastor and he said, wow, I didn't even know you were in town last night. Thanks for coming and visiting that guy in the hospital of my church. And I said, huh? He said, you know, the guy was in the coma. He, he got out of the coma this morning. I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, he was in the coma for several weeks, and he woke up this morning and said, where's Brother Herring? Someone tell him thank you for coming and praying with me last night and sitting with me. I said, I'm not even in the state, bro. I thought, I thought that was crazy, but then two other pastors in the same week called me with the same type of rapport. I didn't know you were in town. I didn't know you came to pray for someone in my church. I said, I don't even know who that person is in your church. If I was coming to pray for them, I'd call you first. I wouldn't go there. It was the angel of the Lord that was there. Angels are in this building right now. Whether you see them or not, I'm telling you, in the Holy Ghost, they're in this building right now. Yes, they are. I remember in that revival in Stockton, California, one young man, after the revival was over a year or two later, said, Brother Herring, he said, remember those first few weeks? He said, remember when you would go in the sanctuary and pray about five in the morning? Remember I would sit behind you, right behind you, I always wanted to hear you pray. You would always worship God. He said, remember oh, when people would walk in, you would leave? That was so amazing. I said, uh, I wasn't in there at 5 a.m. ever. I was praying in my room, in the floor, but I never went to the sanctuary one time. He said, stop it, Brother Herring. I saw you every day. I said, no, you didn't. He said, oh, I told everyone in school about it, that I was praying with you. I said, well, you weren't praying with me, but the angel of the Lord goes before you. So why are you saying all this? Because that statement stuck with me. You can prepare for angelic visitations. So a week or two went by, and one morning, about 4 o'clock in the morning, the Lord woke me up and said, would you like to know how to prepare your home for angelic visitations? I said, yeah, wouldn't anyone like to know that? Some of you are like, no, it's because you're scared. Don't worry, you're carnal. They won't come to you. <laughs> Don't mess with me. I see where you are, too. And so... 
I said, yeah, I would, Lord. And so I went out to the living room. He said, read Judges 13. Over my Bible of Judges 13, Bishop, and it's the story of Samson's mom and dad. And, and the angel comes to Samson's mom and says, you're going to have a kid, and don't do all this. Don't let him touch this. Don't let him eat this, and, and don't cut his hair. And, 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 and so she goes and tells her husband, Manoah, and he said, hey, let's pray and see if the Lord will send him back. Now, they think this is a man. And so they pray, and here comes the angel again. And he talks to her, and she says, wait, let me go get my husband. And she goes and gets her husband, and they come back, and he says, what do we do? And the angel says, you do what I told your wife to do, and so on and so forth. And so I began to listen. I began to listen to what God told me as he began to explain to me of how to prepare yourself for angelic activity. He said, go to Hebrews 13, verse 1 and 2. Let brotherly love continue. And then it said, be careful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained entertain angels unaware. I said, I know that verse, Lord. He said, look up the word entertain. I looked up the word entertain. In the Greek, it means to show hospitality to. It says, be careful to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have shown hospitality to angels unawares. And I said, okay, now you've got my attention. And he said this, the reason I tell you to show hospitality to people you do not know is because I test you with strangers to see if I can trust you with angels. You can drive up to the stop sign and roll down your window and yell at the homeless man to get a job and have no repercussion about it. But when you do that, you just delayed yourself angelic activity. Because if you do that to an angel, they are mighty beings. And God knows there are certain things that tick angels off. Now I'm going to get real with you now. The first thing that bugs angels, carnality. They are spirit beings. They worship in spirit. They fight in the spirit. They move in the spirit. They respond in the spirit. And so when we are in the flesh and we respond in the flesh and we live in the flesh and we act out in the flesh, they do not like that. It can provoke them, the Bible says. There's something else that bugs angels, and you're not going to believe it, but uncleanness. One amen, not even a burp. Oh, where are the teenagers at? Filthiness does not attract angels. It attracts unclean spirits. Well, cleaning your room has never been more spiritual than now, has it? Angels are attracted to purity, to what's clean, to what's right. And if you want to live in filth, you probably will not have a lot of angelic activity. They live in heaven. Some of you, you're you're nervous right now because you've never been on this journey we're on tonight. Angels cannot stand rebellion. Oh, yeah. An unsubmitted attitude is not something you want to have when angels are near you. You don't want to be the one that loves everyone in church but hates your pastor. Oh, I'm getting real quiet now. Because angels are all about submission to authority. And if you want angels near, you better be submitted to authority that God's placed in your life. I'm hitting it hard right now. They hate blasphemy, bitterness, attitudes of the flesh, anger. These are things that do not draw them near. What draws them near is holiness, worship, hunger, hospitality. And if you start to read in your Bible, you'll see several times where people showed hospitality to angels. And I said, okay, God, I see here 
that Manoah and his wife made food for the angel. I see that Abraham made food for an angel. I see that Gideon made food for an angel. I see that an angel made food for Elijah because he had no food. I see all these, inca- is, is food something? He said, is, is, the, is food the secret? I'm, I mean, I'm weird, so just go with me. And so some of you are like, well, I don't know. Just go with me. And, and I said, is that, is that the secret? And God said, no. He said, that was the best they had to offer. Hospitality is saying, here's the best I have to offer. And in that time, that was the best that they had. And when you get like that, now, oh, it's quiet right now. Now you open yourself up for something to happen in your house, in your life. If you'll show hospital, I asked the Lord, I said, well, how do you know? He said, imagine the most spiritual person you know calling. Imagine Bishop or Pastor Tuttle saying, I'm coming over to your house as soon as church is over. Some of you would be leaving right now to go clean the house. <laughs> Others would be like, well, how about we do it tomorrow or a year from now? Because <laughs> you need to do more than cleaning. <laughs> And so I said, yeah, he said, imagine someone spiritual saying they're coming over. What would you do? I said, I'd clean the house. He said, now magnify that by 10,000, you've got an angel come. And this is what he told me. If you want a higher level of visitation, you must raise your level of preparation. You cannot expect the angels of the Lord to be in your house guarding your kids, protecting your family if you want to live in the flesh all the time. Oh, it's going to get really quiet right here, so I'm going to dig it out. Don't up here and go crazy and shout with me when you've got 19 hours of Netflix on your phone that you stare at all the time. I can read right through that spirit that says I can worship God in here, but I have no walk with God out there because I'm glued to social media and I'm glued to the world and I'm glued to Hollywood. That is what keeps heaven from visiting you. You wonder why God's not visiting you? It's time to shut down the voices of the world and tune in to the voice of the heavenlies. It's true. People all over church will go crazy on Sunday night. And then haven't read their Bible all week and wonder why they can't feel these things. Why don't I see these things? Why don't I know these things? Because you're living in a different dimension. If you want to see things in the spirit, if you want to have it, and this is a message I can't preach everywhere. If you want to have these encounters with God, you have to raise your level of preparation. You have to say, I'm going to lower the flesh intake and raise my spirit intake. I'm going to lower what I do in the flesh and raise what I do in the spirit. If I spend five hours on my phone, I'm going to lower that to Tomorrow, I'm going to start getting in my Bible. I know it's, it's crazy that you have to preach this in 2019, that we actually still need to read our Bibles because this is actually not boring. It's a sword that you fight the enemy with, and you cannot win the battle if your sword's in the sheath. And so I said, okay, God, I'm understanding I've got, he said, whether you see the angels or not, whether you know they're there or not, that's how you prepare for them to come. You make your house a sanctuary. You make your car a sanctuary. You make your bedroom a sanctuary. And you start by making your mind a sanctuary. Don't make everything physically clean and then you're dirty in here. It won't work. Start on the inside and let it manifest on the out. I'm helping someone right now. Let it manifest on the outside. Clean up your mind and you'll see everything else get cleaned up in your life too. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That word renewing means to renovate in the Greek. Renovation. What's the first step of renovation? Demolition. Bring some walls down, some things that are in the way of what you want to see, of what your vision is. Remove the old barriers, the old addictions, the old struggles, the old flesh habits. Those are the things blocking you from getting your mind renewed. And so when 
I, I was right now, okay, okay, I got to understand. I understand. This is me and him talking. And I'm, right, I'm just giving you an encounter with me and the Lord. And I'm writing it all down. I need to prepare my home whether I see them or not. And he told me, they may not visit you. you he said, you, just because you want to see an angel or have an encounter does not mean it's going to happen. There must be a need. There must be something the angel's on assignment for. They don't just hang out to hang out. There must be something that they're there for. And I said, okay, well, uh, help me with this, Lord. I said, I'm not understanding all this. Do I, am I supposed to look? He said, no, you're supposed to raise your expectation, raise your walk with me, raise your connection with me so heaven feels comfortable in your earthly home. I said, oh, okay. So I'm writing it all down. I get it, God. I need to raise my level of preparation. I need to be more connected. And so if how do I raise my level of preparation? Well, if I'm going to church faithfully, if I'm paying my tithes and I'm needing direction, I'm at every service, I'm not getting in the word I need. I haven't, God hasn't said yes, God hasn't said no. I need to raise my level of preparation at my house, at my job. I've got to find things to do to make heaven want to be in the atmosphere. Well, my kid, he just doesn't feel. Listen, maybe if the teenager didn't have 17 straight hours of video games all the time, your kid would feel God in church once in a while. We've got moms and dads that sometimes, help me, Lord, are clueless in the spirit. They wonder why their kid never breaks through, but they never shut the windows of hell off in their house and let every demon come in anytime they want to. And angels don't go in that room. Reverse that right now and make demons uncomfortable in that room. I'm going to kick every devil out of my house, out of my living room, out of my kid's bedroom. You shouldn't want demons visiting your kid in their sleep. I want angels visiting my kid when they sleep. Yes. So, and so, I have... I'm asking the Lord all this stuff, and I, and I said, well, you know, so these things bother them. I get it. I said, is there anything else that bothers them? This is going to get really fun here. I, he said, yeah. He said, read the story of Samson's dad again. I read it, okay. Read the story of Jacob and his encounter with the angel when he wrestled the angels. Okay. I read that story. Oh, one thing those stories had in common where the angels got mad. Both times... The human asked the angel, what's your name? And I'm like, okay, you have to help me with this, God. He said sometimes angels would tell their names, but most of the time they would not. Gabriel told his name, and that's about it. And the other angel said one time, Michael's coming to help me. But Gabriel was really the only one that would come. And the reason why he said Gabriel told his name, he was letting people know, I'm going to be in agreement with you. I'm going to be back. Just ask Mary and Joseph four different times. They had encounters with this angel. So he would let them know, this is my name, and I'm here with you. I'll be back to visit you and talk to you about what's going on. But every other time, angels wouldn't say their name. Daniel he would talk to. Hey, Gabriel talked to Daniel. Gabriel talked to Mary. But most of the time, angels would not say their name. Why? Because according to Exodus, when God sends an angel before you, he said, beware of him, provoke him not, for my name is in him. In other words, when the human would ask the angel, what's your name? The angel was sent in the name of the Lord. And if the angel gets in front of the name of the Lord to declare his own name, now he's more like Lucifer. Let me help you right now. And that's just not for angels. That's for humans too. Anytime God uses you and you step in front of God and think you're the one that everyone needs to hear. If you want your name worshipped and you want your name praised, you're like angels, but you're not like heavenly angels. You're like fallen angels. And so, he said, provoke him not. My name is in him. He can't tell you his name because he's been sent in my name. That's like taking the credit for something only God can do. 
That'd be like saying, I filled people with the Holy Ghost, or I, I washed away their sin. That's insanity. We wouldn't think of saying that, but that's what it's like when we start to give people praise of things that God does. Let me help you right now. Be careful about praising humans for things that the Lord does. You can thank the human for being available, but that human is not the one healing you. He's not the one delivering you. It's the king of glory working through the human that's touching your life. There's only one name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Amen. So, writing it all down. Okay, I get it, Lord. I went back to sleep. I'm going to raise my level of preparation. I'm going to get more in tune with the Spirit of God. Be more sensitive. You might visit me at the store. You might visit me at the airport. You might visit me at the house. You might come in my dream. You might come through the preacher. You might come through the Word of God. You might come through my daily Bible reading. An angel might whisper, I don't know, but I'm going to be ready. I'm trying to teach you how to hear God for yourself. And so that morning we got up. We went to the little cafe and and. I was just, I was just ready. I was like, come on, bring on the strangers. I'm crazy, but yeah, it's a good crazy most of the time. And so I was in line, and I paid for my food, and me and Janae sat down. So we had the two boys, baby, still, baby girl still wasn't born. And so we're sitting there, and Janae said, Josh, the guy behind you, he's a homeless man. And I was like, ah. Oh. I ran over to him. I gave him $10. I said, hey, here you go, man. Enjoy lunch. He said, thank you. I'm like, Angel? He said, no. I said, no. <laughs> Just being real. I'm crazy, y'all. So y'all act so dignified. That's cute. <laughs> so I just I started trying to bless. I found myself even forgetting about angels and just trying to bless people. You know why? Because the word said, before you entertain strangers, it said, let brotherly love continue. Meaning, love everybody around you because you have no idea who's really sitting by you right now. Oh, here's what's really crazy. Ready? He said, you can't expect an angel to show up if you hate your brother. You can't be like Cain and say, send me angels, but I can't stand someone across the aisle. That's why the bishop was so in tune earlier about unity. If you want heaven involved, there must be unity like never before. If you get a church unified, you get angels in the atmosphere. That's true. You'll never see a devil fight another devil. You'll never see an angel fight another angel. Because they're on the same teams. But if you want, it's, it's so crazy how we pray for revival and then we can seriously hold on to a grudge with someone in the, in the church. And then wonder why God isn't answering our prayer. I believe corporately, individually, all of us tonight need to drop some rocks, drop some grudges. God, if there's anyone in my heart that I've got ill feelings toward, I forgive them right now. Why? Because you are, they are holding you hostage from heavenly activity. Oh, that's powerful right there. Well, I'm not sure if I've got anyone. Here's how you can tell if you've got ill feelings in your heart towards someone. If someone says that person's name and inside you go, ugh. There it is. You might smile outwardly. Oh, he's a great person. And we're like, you're, you're like, I remember eight years ago. Yeah. Drop it. Let it go. The sooner you let it go, the happier you'll be. And, oh, I'm, I'm on something right now. Unforgiveness blocks angels. But when you forgive everybody, after all, wasn't it the Lord on the cross who was forgiving everyone? Then said, I can call down legions of... He can call down legions of angels while he's forgiving people. What do you think you can happen in your life if you forgive everyone right now? Yes, people have hurt you. Yes, they were wrong. Yes, they hurt you bad. But if you'll forgive them, you'll loose the angels of God in your house. And so a few weeks went by, Bishop, and I was, we were blessing people, and we kind of got into the habit of just blessing people. And before long, it was just, it was just fun just to try to 
bless strangers. And then one day we were, went to the drive-thru and we were, got some terrible food for the kids they probably shouldn't eat. And we were heading down the road and Janae's like, well, they forgot to give us straws. And I said, there's a, there's a like jack in the box up the street. I can go in there and grab a couple straws. And so I pull in the parking lot and I run in and I grab two straws and I run out. As I'm running out, there's a lady sitting at the table and I could tell that she, uh, she was just, she was very dirty and she had a long dress on. Long shirt to her, to her feet. And, man, I just, I was like, man, I, I thought she was homeless. I just ran to the car. I grabbed a $20 bill. I ran back inside. I set it down. Only I can describe it is like this. I set it down, and she looked at me like this. She went, like, the only way I can describe it is like, you passed. And I was like, whoa. I just walked out, like, okay, that was weird. I was like, I opened the door. I was like, I'm going back in to talk to her. Walked in the door, and she's not in there. I said, okay, this is too much. I, I believe you. Thank you for all that, God. All right, it's real. I'm going to get in my car and go home now and pray through and go to sleep. With the pillows over my head. And so I got in the car. I'm like, babe, this lady, I told her, She's like, go back in. I'm like, well, I went back in. And I literally opened the door, and she was not there. I go back in, and she's in there. She was, I was like, oh, stop. I was like, just stop. Got in the car, and we left. I was like, okay, this is real. Goodbye. Thank you, Lord. I believe you. I believe your word. I'm in it. Okay, all right. About a year goes by. We're in Florida, and we are in we're, we're having great revival. And then God, had, we get a crazy schedule. I mean, Janae was pregnant with our third baby. We have to fly on a, on a Thursday, I believe it is, fly to Kansas City, preach uh, Thursday night or fr Friday, preach Friday night and preach Saturday morning. And then we need to fly Saturday afternoon to New Orleans and get a rental car and with the two boys and drive two hours to Mississippi Saturday night to preach in Mississippi Sunday morning. It's going to be a great weekend. So we fly up there and we get to church Friday night and it explodes and God moves and does crazy stuff. And then Saturday morning, we're in the service, and I'm preparing, and the, the, preacher's, the preacher's son, the pastor's son, walked behind me, and he goes, oh, Lord, thank you for, for Brother Herring's commitment. He, he has prayed for you to give him encounters in the spirit, and there are angels near him, and he's about to have an encounter with one. Thank you, Lord. Amen. He walks off, and I'm like, uh, huh, what? That was like a year ago. And he just walks off. I'm like, man, we get in the car, we preach, we cruise to the airport, we rush in. Have you ever traveled with children every week? It's really fun. And so we, we get to the uh, security. We go through that with our 17,000-foot stroller that is like a car. And we have to break it down to 900 pieces because we have to do that to get it through. And we're doing other words. We're stressed. And we get it through. And we get on the plane. And they're going, kids are going crazy. And we land. And it's 10 o'clock at night. We still have to go rent a car. And we still have a two-hour drive. And, oh, we have to get car seats, too. Every dad, this is really fun. Have you ever put car seats in in the middle of the night when you're already stressed out? Is there any dad that's, that... Y'all all scared. Leave me up here like that. Three men. Thank you for the real men in here. <laughs> car seats are really fun. So we get this van, and I'm, I'm tired, and I'm trying to put these car seats in. I can't get the hook thing to, and I'm, <clears throat> it's, still, it's still too loose, so I'm trying to tighten it, get them all done, get the kids strapped in. All right, let's go to wherever we're going. And it's, it's almost 11 o'clock, and we're driving out, and we get out about, about oh, I don't know, 100 yards. Out of the, we turn left the light, and we got 100 yards down the road, and I see red and blue lights behind me. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I'm doing this for your kingdom. Like, I'm taking my family with me. I'm trying my best. And, uh, and, uh, and the first thing I noticed about the officer was that he could not drive. Because he drove over the curb several times when he pulled me over. Clunk, 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 clunk. I was like, man, that cop can't drive. Look in my mirror. And he gets out. We're in New Orleans. He gets out of his car. He's about seven feet tall, African-American. And, and he sees me in my mirror and goes, and I was like, I'm good. He's like, 
I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, babe, I'm going out here. This, this policeman wants me to talk to him. So I get out of the car, and he, he's behind the, say the pulpit's the car. He's about this angle right here. He's just standing with his arms like this, staring at the car. And I walk up to him like, yes, sir, officer. He doesn't say a word. Just, and I was like, yes, sir. He goes, he points at the car. And I was like, yes, sir. He just goes. And I was like, uh, yes, sir. I'm not going to, you know, be rude, but I'm like, what am I supposed to say? I'm like, yes, sir. And then he points a third time, and I'm like, oh, my, oh, my taillights are off. I'm like, I'm sorry, sir, I'm tired. And he interrupts me and goes, calm down, champ. I know you just got here. I'm like, yes, sir. Then he reaches down and hugs me and says, praise the Lord. Go get him tomorrow. And I was like, yes, sir. He smiled at me, got in his car, drove over the curb, and disappeared and drove away. The next morning, 32 people were filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. First time for everything. I've never met an angel before in New Orleans. Met some demons. A week later, we're in... We're flying to, where are we flying the next week, babe? We're flying from Florida to Philadelphia, Philly to Ohio to do a, a youth rally with Brother Carson. And we are like, with the kids, she's pregnant. She feels wonderful. I feel wonderful. And no one cares how I feel at that moment. I get it when your wife's pregnant. It's wonderful. And so I've got the two boys and we get on our flight to Philly, and we land in Philly, and we're waiting for the stroller to come off because we have to hurry to our gate because we have 45 minutes before the flight takes off, and the stroller's not coming out. And I'm like, it's 40 minutes, 35 minutes, 30 minutes. And I'm like, oh, oh, and I'm getting stressed. They show up when you're stressed, by the way. You won't pick up on them when you're stressed. Oh, yeah. And I'm stressed out. And I'm like, oh, my word, we're going to miss our flight. We're going to miss our flight. And we are in gate A. Our flight leaves out of gate F. Have you ever been to Philly Airport? It's like a hand. A, B, C, D, E, F. It's like all these wings that stay. We're literally on the opposite end of the airport. And I was like, we're not going to make our flight. I've done this for 17 years. We're going to miss this flight. We're going to miss this rally tonight. I was like, I can't believe it. Finally, the stroller comes off. Or before, wait, before the stroller comes off, I, I'm sitting there talking to someone, and then I'm waiting. I'm looking out there, and all of a sudden, this man walks down. This is shorter man walks down. He's got an iPad, and I'm not even paying attention to him. And he says, he says, hello, sir. I said, hello. He said, your ride is waiting to take you to your, to your flight. I was like, my ride? He said, yes. There's a car up there waiting for you to take you. And your family, I said, oh, I'm thinking my, my wife must have booked someone and called. Okay. I'm okay, thank you very much. He, and I looked, and my stroller's right there. And I was looking at him. I was like, okay, thanks. He said, yep, have a good day. Okay. And I go up there, and there's a man on a cart in the airport. And I think nothing of it. And Janae gets on, the boy's going to, I get on the back with the stroller, the 900-piece one. <laughs> this is great. And he starts driving. And we're in the middle of the airport, and all of a sudden, he just stops and says, see that door over there? And I'm like, you mean like that goes out to the planes? He said, yeah. He said, go down those stairs, go out that door. Your ride's waiting. I said, sir, we can't go out that door. We'll get arrested. Those, there are planes out there. He said, just do it. I was like, go down those stairs and go out that door, out to where the planes are. He said, yes. What do you have to lose? Just my children, my marriage, my life, whatever. So my stroller, I hope we, lose, I hope we do lose the stroller. Let's, amen. Take this first, please. And so we go down the stairs. The door opens, and there's a bus down there with all the planes. The bus is empty except the driver. He says, welcome aboard. Drives around the planes all the way. We haven't told him where we're going. But somehow he knows, drives us to our gate where they're waiting for us. They get, we get on the flight, we sit down, and it hits me. 
you think those were humans? They were helping you. I was like, no way. No way. We land in Ohio. 42 people received the Holy Ghost that night. A girl in a wheelchair with, with a leg that was missing a bone fragment. When we prayed for her, God raised her up, and God grew bones in her legs in that altar call. Let me tell you, the angels of the Lord are with you. They're with you. I can tell you stories all night, but I fail to tell you in the Holy Ghost. They're in this atmosphere. They're near your houses, and they're wanting to help you. Now is not, this is not the revival to be carnal. This is not the revival to be a critic, to be disconnected. Because I fully believe that angels all over this city, of Vider, Boma, in this area, they are on site for a reason. They're here to reap the harvest. They're here to protect your kids. They're there to bless your family. I was right here two weeks ago and looking right over there when the Lord spoke to me and said, when you come back, tell the people the angels are on site and they are ready to work if the people are ready to work with them. I pray the word of God to be true. Let the angel thrust in the sickle right now into Beaumont, in Divider. Let there be a harvest. Let there be a breakthrough. Let heaven collide with us and let there be something we can only imagine. Manifest in our life. Stand if you're not already standing. And he walked up to me, Detroit, Michigan, Art Wilson's church, Friday night, Thursday or Friday, Friday night. She's like, oh, Brother Herring, if you could see that angel over your left shoulder, it's beautiful. It's like this iridescent colors of gold and different, like a turquoise, and I can't describe it, but it's just over your left shoulder. I thought, uh-huh, right. That was Friday night, Sunday morning. People were taking pictures of the service. And the pastor went crazy. He said, Brother Herring, look what they caught on camera hovering over your left shoulder. And everything the lady described was in that picture two days later. All I know is this. They're near. Just two weeks ago in Dallas, in one of the midweek services, Bishop, there was a, a young boy and a girl, probably 14, 15 years old, and the girl had never been to a church service in her life, ever. And she sits there, and she starts to go crazy during the preaching. And she turns and says, who's the man behind the preacher that keeps whispering in his ear every time he goes to speak? And the, people, the guy said, what are you talking about? I said, who's the guy behind him that keeps whispering in his ear? Can't you see that man right behind him? I didn't even know what was going on. But the angel of the Lord was in the room. I don't know. I don't even ask God when he tells me to preach this. I don't know why I preach it. I don't know. It doesn't happen very often, four or five times a year. But he told me to preach it at this church because there are angels in this city and in this building ready to help you right now. I don't know what needs you have, but I want to challenge you to start asking God, can you get the angels involved right now? Can you get the angels involved right now on the situation with the kid, on the situation with the tumor, on the situation with the job? Can you get the angel of the Lord? If you're ready... To walk at a higher dimension. I want you to come stand up here right now. I believe in partations in this room. I believe that your sensitivity is about to go up. I believe God's about to open your eyes like he's never opened your eyes. I believe you're about to read the Bible like you've never read the Bible. I believe you're about to pray like you've never prayed. I believe expectation is going to be in your spirit. Hospitality is going to be in your spirit. Brotherly love is going to be in your spirit.
Why are you saying this? Because some of you are about to start bringing people to church that you have no idea, but you never would have talked to them had it not been for this word right now. And you're going to talk to people this week. I wouldn't be shocked if people were here tomorrow night that people meet tomorrow during the day and say, come to church with me by just showing love and hospitality. I would not be shocked if the strangers start entering the building tomorrow night. I'm going to pray with you, and I'm going to pray for you. That heaven would begin to open up your spirit. If you need direction, I'm going to pray for your dreams. I'm going to pray for every time you read the Bible that you'll be led to where you're supposed to read. I'm going to pray for every conversation that you have that God would order your steps, order the time of the, the meeting, order the time where you cross paths. I'm going to pray right now in the name of the Lord that you would walk in the spirit. Would you raise your hands right now and by the authority of the word of God and by the power of the name name of Jesus. I pray a release right now of spiritual sensitivity. I pray for hunger and thirsting after you right now. I pray for people to throw down carnality and laziness and anything in the way of them hearing your voice. I release direction in the Holy Ghost right now in the name of Jesus. Let there be divine encounters. Let there be divine conversations. Order every step. Order every word. Every Everything you're about to do in the name of Jesus, somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, would you go after God right now with everything inside of you? Would you pray until hell backs up and heaven steps in? Would you pray until you get heaven's attention? Would you pray until something shakes in your spirit? Come on, Mom, prepare your house. Come on, Dad, prepare your house. Come on, teenager, prepare your room. Come on, saying to God, prepare your mind. God can't visit you if everything's filled up with the world, with flesh. Hey, come on, someone make some room right now for God. I feel the Holy Ghost and the Spirit. Someone make room for God right now. Create some time for heaven to visit you. Angels ascend and descend at the breaking of the day. I release early morning prayer right now in this building in the name of Jesus right now. This is the altar call that needs to go home with you. You will not experience the full breakthrough in this altar call, in this altar, in this sanctuary. This altar call must go to your house, must go to your car, your workstation, your desk at school. Oh, Somebody get their antennas on right now in the Holy Ghost. Someone wake up in the spirit. God wants to talk to you. God wants to visit you. I speak over your dreams right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. I curse every nightmare from hell. I curse every threat. I curse every image as Satan has released to your mind when you cannot fight back. In the name of Jesus, let angels stand by your bedside tonight, by your children's bedside tonight, and comfort you and guard you and protect you.
You do not worship the angel. You worship the Lord. You worship the name of the Lord. And as you're worshiping him, they join with you. They fight with you. They protect you. Some people say that they give angels orders. I don't agree with that. The Bible says we are made lower than the angels. And the Bible says he gives his angels charge over us. We don't order them, but we can ask God to send them. Oh, ho, ta, sha, ta. Someone ought to pray for a loved one right now, not knowing what's going on, and just say, Lord, send an angel tonight, please. Lord, can you send an angel right now? Name the person right now. You, you may have no idea. They might be in a car heading to an intersection. Just, just, just start to pray. Lord, send your angel right now. Send your angel right now. Here's what I feel to do. Every person in the youth group, every college and career age, I want you to come stand right here. If you could make some room right now. Every person in the youth group, every young person, every young single, I want you to come up here right now. We are going somewhere in this revival. We're starting off at a high place. There will be a lot of activity in the upcoming weeks in the spirit. And I'm going to pray over these young people right now for the protection of the Lord to be upon them. That they'll be as bold as lions. That they'll conquer anything that's in their life right now that's been trying to pull them down. And I'm going to curse every addiction in Jesus' name right now. I curse every devil that you've been letting in on your phone. Ah, shata. On that screen. In your mind. Come on. Now, can I get every elder, every mom and dad to stretch your hands toward them right now? Bishop, can you stretch your hands over them right now? I pray by the authority of the word of God and the power of the name of Jesus that angels would begin to visit these young people, that they would go with them in every step that they take, that they would protect them, that every day they walk on the campus, walk in the schoolyard, walk to their job, that you would be with them. I curse every fear, every bullying spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I bind that right now. I command that to leave in the name of the Lord. Release angels, God. Release angels right now. Where demons have been comfortable in their life, I pray you'd send angels right now to chase those demons away before they even leave this altar. Let there be a shifting in that bedroom, a shifting in the atmosphere of that car. Every mom and dad ought to throw down right about now. Every mom and dad, I don't care if your kids are 40 or if your kids are 5, you ought to throw down right now for your children. I don't care if they're grown and in here or out there. I feel to tell every parent right now, pray for your children. Pray for angels to protect them, for angels to guard them, for angels to keep them. Come on, young men. 
I want you to get a breakthrough right about now. Come on, young men. Let's get a breakthrough going right about now. Come on, young lady. Get a breakthrough going. I'm not letting this go until you break through. I'm not letting this go until you get a breakthrough. In the name of Jesus, the devil would love me to tap into that little bit and leave it alone. But I'm going to go after it in the name of the Lord. We need a breakthrough in the young people that causes hell to fear. Let there be such a breakthrough that angels are unleashed in the atmosphere, God. Let there be such a breakthrough that they leave here changed forever. Come on, come on, come on, throw that addiction down. You need to throw it down right now. Throw that smoking down. Throw that alcohol down. Throw that pornography down. I don't know where it is, but it's in here. Throw it down in the name of Jesus. Throw it down in the name of Jesus. I curse adultery in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in this atmosphere, in the name of Jesus. Let there be purity in every house, in every marriage, in after the Holy Ghost on me, in every family. Adultery is a work of the flesh. The Bible said, let the Spirit of God get loose. Come on, get that spirit off of you. Get that thought away from you. Let God control your heart. Let God control your thoughts. Every hand ought to be raised right now and every person ought to ask God, visit me again, renew me again, renew my mind, renew my spirit, renew my walk with you. Let me be changed. Talk to me in your word. I'm ready for an encounter. Open my eyes that I might see. Come on, your eyes belong to God. Your ears belong to God. Your mind belongs to God. Your heart belongs to God. Hallelujah. You know, if your family's near, I want you to go near your family again right now. If your family's in this room with you, I want you to get with your family. If they're not with you, just stay where you are. But if your family's here, I want you to find your family. I just sensed this in the Holy Ghost, and I don't know why, but I'm going to hit it. This is two times in a row now where I felt this in altar calls in this church to pray for families. Whether the battle is public or secret. I pray for angels to be in your house, to be in your relationships. I come against strife and arguing in Jesus' name. Let there be peace right now in the name of the Lord Jesus in every home, in every conversation between mom and dad, son and daughter, Daughter and mom, daughter and dad, son and mom, son and dad. Dad and mom, pray over your family right now. Come 
Come on, make your home a sanctuary. Make your family a sanctuary where angels want to visit your home. Hallelujah. I love it. I can hear dad saying, I plead the blood over my house. I like that right there. I love it. That's authority praying. Somebody pray with authority for a moment. I plead the blood over my son, Jude, and my son, Jet, and my baby girl, Jade, in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of the Lord Jesus over my wife's mind, over my home, in Jesus' name. Somebody pray with authority. Pray with dominion. Heaven's going to be in our house. Hallelujah. That's it. You're in the spirit. You're in the spirit. Several of you are in the spirit right now. You're in the spirit. You're in the spirit. You're in the spirit. That's it. Live in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Talk in the Spirit. Teach in the Spirit. Reach in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Now listen, listen. Take this altar call home with you. Take it home with you. Walk in the house tonight, dad, mom, and speak it. I plead the blood in this house right now. Make sure nothing hell would have in there could stay in there. When you open your mouth, they're going to leave. And let that be a place. And then work on your mind tonight, tomorrow, this week. Prepare your life. Raise your level of preparation. Make it hard for God not to visit you. Make it hard for God not to want to talk to you. God came and visited Abraham. He was a friend of God. Make it hard for God not want to come visit you. Adam, God visited him every day. Every day for the longest time.